Adding annotations to an MK map view is just a matter of dropping pins at the correct location. But in this app, we want users to be able to tap the locations for more information, then tap again to edit that location. Making all this happen takes a little bit of Swift UI, a little bit of UI kit, and a little bit of map kit, all rolled into one. It's an interesting challenge. The first step is to implement the map view view for method, which will be called if we want to provide a custom view to represent our map pin. We looked at this previously, but this time we're going to use a more advanced solution that reuses views for performance and also adds a button that can be tapped for more information. MapKit handles that button press in a curious way, but it's not hard, just a bit odd at first. Anyway, the main thing here is reusing views for performance. Remember, creating views is expensive, so it's best to create a handful and just recycle them as needed. Just change the text labels rather than destroying and recreating them each time. MapKit gives us a nice and simple API for handling view reuse. We create a string identifier of our choosing, then call DQ reusable annotation view with identifier on the map view, passing in that identifier. If there is a view waiting to be recycled, we'll get it back and can reconfigure it as needed. If not, we'll get back nil and need to create the view ourselves. If we do get back nil, it means we have to create the view, which means instantiating a new MK pin annotation view and giving it our annotation to display. However, we're also going to set a property called write callout accessory view, which is where we'll place a button to show more information. We're not in Swift UI land here, which means we can't use the button view. Instead, we have to use the UI kit equivalent UI button. Now I could spend a few hours teaching you about the intricacies of working with UI button, but fortunately I don't need to. When used with map kit, it's only one line of code because we can use a built-in button style called detail disclosure. It looks like an eye with a circle around it. Like all delegate methods from UIKit and MapKit, this next one has a long name. So the best thing to do is go inside the coordinator class in MapView and type view4 to have Xcode's code completion pop up. Hopefully the correct MK MapView method should appear and you can press return to make it fill in the full method. Once that's done, edit it to this. First, we'll make our unique identifier for view reuse. We'll say let identifier equals placemark. Then we'll attempt to find a cell we can recycle. var annotation view equals map view dot dq reusable annotation view with identifier identifier. If annotation view is equal to nil, it means we didn't find one to recycle, so make a new one. Annotation view equals mk annotation view annotation annotation reuse identifier identifier. Then we'll allow this thing to show more information. Annotation view question mark dot can show callout equals true. And attach an information button to the view. Annotation view question mark. Write callout accessory view equals UI button type dot detail disclosure. Else, this means we have a view to reuse, so give it the new annotation. Annotation view question mark dot annotation equals annotation. Regardless of whether it's a new view or a recycled one, send it back. Return annotation view. Now, that won't quite work yet, because even though we set can show callout to true, MapKit won't show callouts for annotations without a title. We don't have a way of entering titles just yet, so for now we'll just hard code one. Go back to contentview.swift and add this line where we create the MK point annotation for the locations array. New location.title equals example location. If you run the app now, you'll find you can drop pins by pressing the plus button, and you can then tap a pin to bring up the title, along with a little I button on the right. Making that button do something is where the fun comes in, albeit for a very specific definition of fun. Things start off straightforward. We're going to add two properties to our map view that track whether we should show place details or not, and what place was actually selected. These will form another bridge between MK map view and Swift UI. So we're going to mark them with at binding. Add these two properties now. At binding, var, selected place, mk point annotation, optional. At binding, var, showing place details, bool. Now it's down to you, but I prefer to place all my at binding properties together, which affects how Swift creates its member-wise initializers. Having those extra properties in place means 
we have to adjust the map view preview struct to include them, like this. Selected place dot constant mk point annotation dot example showing place details dot constant false. We're able to adjust the order of those parameters based on how you arrange the properties in map view. Over in content view .swift, we have to do much the same, although first we'll need some at state properties to pass in. So start by adding these to content view. At state, private var, selected place, mk point annotation, question mark. At state, private var, showing place details, equals false. We can now update its map view line to pass those values in. Selected place, dollar selected place, showing place details, dollar showing place details. When that showing place details boolean becomes true, we want to show an alert with the title and subtitle of the currently selected place, along with a button that lets users edit the place. We don't have editing ready yet, but we can at least show the alert and connect it up to MapKit. Start by adding this alert modifier to the Z stack in content view. Dot alert is presented, dollar showing place details. Alert, title, text, selected place, dot title, or unknown. Message, text, selected place, dot subtitle, or missing place information. Primary button, dot default, text, OK. Secondary button, dot default, text, edit. Inside there, I'll put a comment, edit this place. Finally, we have to update map view, so that tapping the I button for an annotation sets the selected place and showing place details properties. This is done by implementing a method with an even longer name than before. So the best thing to do is go inside the coordinator class and type map view call. Xcode's code completion should offer a recommendation, and you can press return to fill it in. This method, the important part of which is called call out accessory control tapped, gets called when the button is tapped. It's down to us to decide what should happen. In this instance, we're going to start by checking we have an MK annotation view. And if so, use that to set the selected place property of the parent map view. We can then also set showing place details to true, which will in turn trigger the alert in content view. It's another chain, this time connecting map pin taps to our alert. Add this method to the coordinator class now. Guard let place mark equals view dot annotation as question mark mk point annotation else return parent dot selected place equals place mark parent dot showing place details equals true with that in place the next step of our project is complete so please run it now you should be able to drop a pin tap on it to reveal more information then press the i button to show an alert this is starting to come together